Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. Now in this particular video, I am going to talk about that if you have not qualified any of the national level exams like your CSIR, JRF or CSIR NET or your GATE exam and if you want to join PhD in India, so how you can do so? What are the opportunities? What are the benefits of that? What are cons of that? And how you can assist yourself uh, financially? Okay? So I will be discussing all these things in this particular video. So stay with me for this complete video. So I guess you all are aware about this thing that uh, you can take admission in IITs, ISERs, NITs and IASC through your gate school. So I'll be not talking about that. I'll be talking about that if let's say you don't have your gate qualified, okay, you don't have JRF qualified also, then how you can do that? So the, the option are two. One is government universities and the other one is uh, private institutes. I'll be talking about both of them, okay. So let's talk about government institutes first of all. So there are many government universities basically, there are top universities of India which provide an opportunity to you that let's say due to some reason you were not able to perform well in the CSIR net exam or in your gate exam. So you have a particular opportunity that you can appear for their entrance exam, perform well over there, go for the interview, give your best over there and then if they are satisfied with your performance, they will take you in their PhD program. Okay, So that is a very a good opportunity if you have not performed well in the CSIR or in the gate exam. So that is one thing. Okay. Second is the private institutes. In the private institutes, you have to pay a lot of amount for the admission, and the private institutes are self-funded. Okay. Uh, like you have uh, uh, MIT University, and these are a lot of private institutes which are there in India. I guess you all all are aware about that. So I'll be talking about both of them at the end of it that which one is better and which is not from my perspective but I'll be just telling you all the things regarding both of them. Okay. Next is that what is the benefit of, of taking admission in these universities if you don't have JRF if you don't have GET then why should you go for them. So the benefit is that your time is getting saved. Okay. If you take admission uh, you're not dropping your ear right you have uh, that particular time in which you are assigned to a particular institute you are doing research over there so that is one very important thing for those who do not want to waste much time on preparation second thing is that an opportunity okay you are getting one more opportunity apart from your CSIR and gate entrance exam you have one more entrance exam where you can perform well and you can just get into the research field now the next thing is that how much you will be paid okay what will be the fellowship so if I talk about government institutes, so they generally pay you around 8000 rupees if you don't have any JRF or GATE or anything, okay. If you are just relied, they are called as non-net student. So a non-net student is getting 8000 rupees. Even if you are just LS qualified, that means if you are just net qualified, then also you will be called as non-net student because you don't have JRF, right. Net does not mean that you will be getting a, a higher amount of fellowship. So if you are non-GRF student, you will be just getting 8000 rupees per month as per as the government rules are for now. Okay. In the private institutes, the fellowship is quite higher, depends upon the institute of its own. Some institutes gives you 16,000, some gives you 20,000 per month. So it depends over there. Okay. But here in the government institutes, it is around 8000. Okay. So it's quite less. But the what the difference is that in the government institute, you have to pay a very less amount of fees also. Okay. The fee per semester will be around three to five thousand, or less than ten thousand, I would say. Okay, so every uh, six month or every semester, you don't have to pay a lot of amount in the government institutes. In the private institute, you have to pay a lot of amount. Second thing, if you are staying out away from your home, so you have to pay for the hostel, you have to pay for the uh, mess and all. So these all things are subsidized in the government institute, whereas these are not subsidized in a private institute. So you have to put a lot of money over there. So monetarily, government institutes are much favorable compared to the private institute. Now, one more very important thing is that let's say if you have enrolled into the PhD in a particular institute and during your PhD, let's say in the first year itself, in the upcoming CSI net exam, you qualified JRF, then what is going to happen? So you can apply uh, for JRF. You can just tell to the, your admin that yes, you have qualified JRF exam what they are going to do they are going to escalate your uh, your fellowship okay they are just going to stop their fellowship and you will be now getting funded through csir so this is something 
which is very good because let's say in between of your phd whenever you qualify jrf you are going to your your fellowship is going to get escalated okay so there is no loss in it next let's talk about that what are other options to get some money apart from these fellowship because the fellowship i told you it's very minimal right so what are other ways in which you can just get some more money for your survival in the institute see for phd it's a it's a long process it's a five year of course so it's not like going to happen just like you have done your masters or bachelors okay so it is a long process and at this particular age you have to support yourself you have to support your family so if not family at least you have to support yourself right so for that money is very important so there are certain options especially in these universities what happens that the professors let's say you are assigned to a professor x and that professor gets a particular project so they have certain seats for project assistants or project fellows in that they can assign you and they can just give you some uh, some additional money from their side okay which they are going to give to a particular research associate so that amount will be around 15 to 20000 it varies depending upon that particular project so that will be additional money which you will be getting from that supervisor or from that professor for that particular project so you can just enroll into these universities work hard over there prove yourself to your supervisor that yes that yes you are capable of working hard and based upon your performance he is going to give you uh, this particular fellowship okay this particular additional fellowship now this is uh, remember that this particular fellowship is subjected to the av availability of seats also it is dependent upon that particular supervisor that whether he is going to give you or not so there are many different ways also to earn money online so i'll not be talking about those in this particular video the next thing which i will talk about that what is the con okay what is the uh, what is not so good about joining phd in these universities the first thing which i would say is that once you join phd you will be busy with your work with your research work and it will be difficult to take out time at least after one year okay so in the first one year you might get time to prepare you might get time to study for csir or for gate but after one year ends after your research course work ends after that particular time it will be very difficult to focus on studies especially and just taking out time from your research work so research will become more and more intense as the time flows in your phd so that's why if you are going into phd and if you don't have any fellowship i will recommend ki at least for the first year focus on your studies and try to grab the any of the fellowship okay because late in the later on terms this is going to affect okay so the point of making this particular video was to inform you all regarding this because i know that many of you are not aware about this particular type of admission and you all are like running behind for jrf you all don't know that apart from jrf also you can take phd admission through the entrance exams okay so i will recommend that go for these certain institutes universities basically go for these universities uh, check their website check whether they have date for admission or not at least they have date for admission up till the month of june okay so just go for that check it out fill the form and apply for that it's a good opportunity if you don't have jrf and if you don't want to waste uh, much of your time and if you are confident enough that once you join your phd you will be able to crack uh, jrf later on so you should go for it and you should uh, try at least okay so trying is very important giving exam is very important rather than just sitting and not applying to that so this is something which i wanted to tell all of you in this particular video i hope that whatever i told you is much clear to you if you have any questions regarding it you can ask me down in the comment sections below ha huh. at the end i will just tell you my personal opinion i personally believe that rather than going for a private institute you should go for a government institute because in private institutes there are lot of other uh, factors which which work and which you are going to experience during the, your research work in government institutes there are their own issues but government universities are cheaper uh, your life is much easier over there compared to the private one if you are living in the same city and if you don't have to go for hostels and all if you have if you are a day scholar for that then you can opt for a private institute or institute also but so if you want to stay in hostels and then do your research for that i would recommend government institutes because it's monetarily more favorable okay and other factor is that in the research work the projects which you get are basically like the the funding and the other things are much frequent and much easier in government institutes compared to the private institute okay so these are certain factors which i wanted to tell you regarding uh, 
uh, the PhD admissions. I guess the video was much clear to you. If you have any question, you can ask that doubt in the comment sections below. That's all from my side, guys. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.